tired of writing the same class code over and over again. In this video, I'll show you how Python's data class can cut the time in half with just one line. We create classes when we want to create custom objects. Let's say I want to create a custom student object that is only going to store its name and its grades. So, I would write a class that looks like this. But since I don't want my student to have any other functionalities and I don't need to create any other methods. So this is how my code would look like. And when I see this code, I would think this is a regular class student that may or may not have some methods. But there is a better way to do it to automatically see that this student is only going to store some values and doesn't provide any functions. In that case, I'm going to use something that's called a data class. But first I need to import it from data classes, import data class. Data class is a special class that only stores some values, but we won't make this class student inherit from data class because when I import data class like this, I actually import a decorator. So I will write here data class decorator. And this data class decorator gets one parameter and that is the class below it, which is in this case student. So I actually pass this class student to this data class. What's important is this data class provides three special methods built in. First one is of course initializer, init, wrapper, which is short for representation, which is a special method that is used when I want to print my objects, and also equal special method if I want to compare if my objects are the same. Now, since I already have init built in, I don't need this init special method. Here, let's create the same code again. Name. And I can't leave just name here. It's usually a common practice to write some type string if I want to leave name uninitialized. But I can give it some default value. For example, mark. And grades, this should be a list. But the problem is I can't write here just these square braces and tell that these grades is a list. I have to use something that's called field. Let's write here field. Field. And this field has one parameter that is very important, that is default factory list. This means that my grades will be assigned a default factory value for list, which is an empty list. And now everything should work. Let me show you. I'll create student s1 to be equal to student. And to the first one, I will only pass the name let's say Alice, the second one will have only the default values, which are mark and empty list. And here I will tell s2.grades.append and let's say 10. Now I can print s1 and also print s2. And you will see how this will print everything. But let's say I want to compare if S1 and S2 are equal. In that case, I will write S1 equals to S2. And this works. But I can't compare if S1 is bigger than S2. For example, S1 bigger than S2. As you can see, this doesn't work. So if I want to have this option to compare, I can pass to argument order in my data class decorator, true. As you can see, there's nothing red now. It will work. As you can see, student name Alice is printed and grades are empty. My student name is Mark because I didn't pass any name. The default name 
will remain, which is mark, and the grades is 10 because I added 10. Also, S1 and S2 are not the same, as you can see, it's very obvious, and S1 is not smaller, is not bigger than S2. Why? Because this Alice starts with A and M starts and Mark starts with M. So M is greater than A. That's why this also prints false. Now, this code is very clean. I can simply look at my class and say, oh, this class is data class, which means it is only used to store some values or to better say, create a custom object that only creates values in some other languages like C or C++, known as struct. If you want to find out more about object-oriented programming, watch my previous videos. The link to it is on the screen now. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next video.